is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. Today's episode is thanks to our Patreon members and our affiliates and partners. Head to patreon.com slash female athlete nutrition to join our membership or donate to the podcast and stay tuned to hear about some amazing deals and discounts from our partners, including Prevenix, Inside Tracker, Orgain, Practice Better, and Jen and Carrie. But for now, we're getting right to the show. Enjoy. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast. This is your host, Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, registered dietitian, sports dietitian, and owner of Rise Up Nutrition. I have been so excited about today's guest and episode. It's with Patty Phillips, the CEO of Women Leaders in College Sports. I'm going to share her bio. It is lengthy, but worth every word. And this episode is worth listening to every word as well. I'm like amped up. I was so inspired after talking to Patty and on their website right now and getting involved. You'll hear me speak about that in a few moments. So there's so many little nuggets and phrases that she says that will empower you and motivate you and then, you know, really understanding her mission and and what she is doing with women leaders in college sports. Just get ready for this episode. Get excited. Okay. So Patty Phillips, if you don't know who she is, she has dedicated her career to coaching, mentoring, and inspiring women at all levels in all industries. As the CEO of Women Leaders in College Sports, which is the nation's premier organization that develops, connects, and advances women working in collegiate athletics, she uses keen insights that she's gathered from her relationships with search form firms, hiring committees, and university presidents to coach women and help them grow in their careers. Under Patty's direction, the association puts on best-in-class leadership events and programs that serve as a catalyst to career growth and advancement for women. Patty has served as the CEO of Women Leaders in College Sports, which was formerly known as the NACWAA. She served in this role since 2010. In her time as CEO, the association has seen triple-digit growth in membership and has grown the national convention attendance by 250% and has undergone that name change and organizational transformation and has established itself as the premier leadership association for women in sport. So obviously, she's been doing amazing work for the past 10 plus years. Patty also created and leads the Women's Leaders Performance Institute, which is a leadership development program for all business industries designed through the lens of sports. The Performance Institute ignites and cultivates the potential in individuals, leaders, and teams through customized coaching and training in order to achieve peak performance. Prior to joining the association, Patty served as the executive director of the Women's Intersport Network, which is based in Kansas City, Missouri, for 11 years. Women's Intersport Network for Kansas City, a nonprofit dedicated to leadership development in girls and women through participation in sports, saw extraordinary growth and success under her leadership. Additionally, Patty Phillips was a color analyst for ESPN, Fox Sports Midwest, Sooner Sports, Metro Sports Television broadcasts of collegiate women's basketball and volleyball games. Earlier in her career, Patty Phillips worked for the NCAA as a champs and life skills program coordinator. And prior to that, she was a head women's basketball and volleyball coach at Ottawa University in Ottawa, Kansas. There, she inherited a losing basketball program and transformed it into a regional power. The team received its first national ranking in school history with Phillips at the helm. 
Known for our, her authenticity and charisma and tireless commitment to women's advancement and development, which you will see, hear, and understand in today's episode, Patty is a well-known keynote speaker on topics such as leadership, teamwork, and culture. In 2014, she presented a TED Talk on the topic of potential and in 2017 launched the Women's Leaders Podcast, where Patty interviews some of the industry's top leading executive and leadership experts known nationwide. In 2019, Patty was quoted in a New York Times article addressing the cultural shift and advancement of women in athletics. Phillips was inducted into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame in 2015 by both Baker University and O'Hara High School Athletics Hall of Fame in 2011 for her own athletic achievements. She received the NCAA's Champion of Diversity Award in 2015 and the PD National Leadership Award in 2017. In 2020, she was named as a Kansas City Women Who Mean Business honoree and a Sports Business Journal Game Changer honoree. Phillips currently serves on the board of directors for the Women's Foundation for Greater Kansas City and as a past president for the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. She has a degree with honors from Baker University and earned her master's in athletic administration and sports psychology from the University of Kansas. Listeners, this is an accomplished woman, a leader, and somebody who is fighting for you every single day. So I hope you really enjoy this episode. So Patty Phillips, thank you so much for joining us on the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast today. I'm super excited to talk. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's, it, and uh, again, we've been trying to get this scheduled for a while. So really looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so much that I just shared with our audience about your bio, who you are, and the amazing work that you are advocating for right now. But I always like to kind of go back to your roots as just somebody who is passionate about sports and female athletes, you know, where did that start for you? Can you share with our listeners a little bit about your personal background with you? Bet. Sports? Yeah. You know, I grew up, you know, just after title nine, you know, so I mean, really, I was probably seven at the time that it was passed. I was just getting into sports. And I, I mean, I wanted to play softball or baseball, there wasn't an opportunity. I didn't play basketball until I was in fifth grade. Mm-hmm. And, but I just loved play, being outdoors and being active in my neighborhood. And I ended up playing with a lot of the guys, you know, played football in the street, baseball in the street. And, and so I grew up loving being active, number one. Yeah. And then as I did get to play in high school, you know, it wasn't until my junior or senior year, I thought, oh my God, I might be able to play in college. I played small college basketball and that really fueled my passion and wanting to kind of be around sports. And, you know, my college degree was English education. My dream was to be a high school English teacher and basketball coach. And then when I graduated, I actually got an opportunity to do that at at the high school level, but I also was offered a job at the collegiate level. I was 22 years old. Wow. And I I tell everyone, you know, the athletic director at this small college had been the uh, men's basketball coach at my high school. So he knew me. Mm -hmm. And we always say, it's not who you know, it's who knows you and is willing to go to bat for you. Mm -hmm. So he knew kind of what I was made of and my fiber and I'm a really hard worker. And, you know, I was hired, uh, I played basketball my whole life. I was hired to be the, the basketball and the volleyball coach and the RD in the dorm and all these other things, SID and all these other things. And so I thought, well, I'll just get my master's and I can always go back to the high school level, which I I thought was my passion. And then of course, when I got into that space, I loved it. And I, you know, took all, went to all sorts of clinics and made sure, you know, so I coached both volleyball and basketball and just, I, I did that for eight years and loved it, but that's really how I got started. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when I, uh, you know, was just researching about you and stuff, and I thought she was the basketball and volleyball coach. Like, I feel like, you know, in today's day and age, that sounds like I know. that wouldn't happen. It just sounds like way too much work. <laughs> right. It, it wouldn't. And so a lot of things wouldn't happen today. Even at small schools, I don't think you have coaches doing volleyball and basketball. They're back to back season. So I was recruiting all the time. Yeah. It was an NAIA school. There was no recruiting rules. So I was literally driving to small towns all over. Kansas and Missouri just nonstop, which is part of the reason why I pivoted out. But so that would never happen again. And also I was hired at 22. Yeah, that would probably never happen again. And I was the third coach in three years. They didn't pay much. And that was really my eye opening moment to, okay, 
the men's side, like he has an assistant and they have this bus they get to take and we were driving vans. So it was just these little things that you notice over time. And again, I wouldn't trade it. And I, you know, I tell people like for me, it was a, it's what they could do at the time with the small school. It could be called a massive inequity, which it was, but ultimately it gave me a massive opportunity. Yeah. And it really, it really launched my career in so many ways. And so I'm really thankful for that opportunity. It was a lot of work, obviously, and I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, it, you know, it's a fair testament of the times that really that was an amazing opportunity for you in, you know, during that time. Now we would say, oh, my gosh, that's so not fair. You were stretched thin and all that. But but that's exactly like at that time, that was absolutely amazing. And it it showed you and you you're the type of person who has that initiative and your brain works that way of, oh, let me keep working at this. I can actually do something about it. I can advocate for change, yep, yep. you know, and that's exactly what you've you know gone on to do. And to hit on this, I think it's just really unique you know, the progress of Title IX, if we could just kind of jump to talking about that a little bit, you know, because, you know, in my generation, I, I always, I always had it, you know, Title IX was always there. And, and maybe in some ways, I took it for granted, you know, it's just like girls do sports. That's how right, I grew right, up. Right. It's just what we do. I, I don't know, I would just love to hear you speak on maybe in your personal opinion, what are some of the most, you know, foundational moments in the history of Title IX because you've been there from the athlete side, the coach side, the advocate side. Yeah. Um, you've been there on all angles now. What what would you say are maybe some of like the biggest, like most transformative events of Title IX? And then as a follow-up to that, where do you see us going? Yeah. In the future of women's sports. Well, one of the well, first of all, Title IX overall created just possibilities for women. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that changes everything. Like, what is possible? I could actually play in college. I could actually be involved in the business sport. So number one, as you're growing up, you thinking that you have those opportunities and we we didn't. It was a little bit different mindset. Although, ironically, I've spent my entire career in the business sports. And again, I was just on the cusp after Title IX, which was, you know, I'm so thankful for that. Huge moment in my career. I think one of the biggest was the 99ers, that 99 women's national soccer team yeah. winning the, you know, the World Cup. And that was like everyone kind of got on board. And there's been waves of momentum since then. Mm-hmm. I think we're coming on a wave right now, the 50th anniversary of Title IX. Mm-hmm. And, you know, things that are happening in the pro space. We're here in Kansas City. We have the NWSL Kansas City Current in our backyard. They are crushing it. They're building the first ever female or women's specific soccer stadium in the world. Amazing. And so these things are happening now that, you know, and by the way, they're selling out games. They're setting records for attendance. Their gear is the most popular gear in Kansas City right now. We also have our home of the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. So maybe the Chiefs are selling more, but I mean, everyone's in current gear. So, you know, these, it's the awareness, the year that, the women's basketball had NCAA women's basketball, mm-hmm. you know, crushing the numbers, the viewership numbers. So we're in a wave right now. And I'm not sure. And obviously the 50th anniversary had a lot to do with that. Every organization, every school, every entity was talking about that. So I think people are tuning in. There's been others in between, obviously, which I, I can't pull up, you know, right now, but I just remember the 99ers being the first time, I, I didn't get to grow up watching women's sports on TV. Yeah. And we've said for years, being in the business I'm in, it's really hard to be a women's sports fan. It's hard to find the WNBA games. They don't show it as much. Right. Yeah. Right. And this year, you know, the women's basketball championship was on ABC network. And so it allowed more people to engage more easily. People are not always streaming or having the apps. And I mean, all that is changing. Yeah. But there has been kind of, different rolling tides of where we think we've made progress. And then we're like, oh, we're not there yet. Yeah. And that was one of the, the things that came up quite a bit this year with the 50th anniversary. We've come a long way for sure. And yet we still aren't at 50% or equity anywhere. Yeah. Not in participation, not in viewership, not in coaches, not in administrators, nowhere. So that's the frustrating part, but we certainly have made strides. Yeah. 
Hey fans, I hope you are enjoying this conversation so far and we'll be back to it in just a moment. But first, I want to pause and let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Female Athlete System of Transformation, aka the Fast Track to Overcome Disordered Eating and Use Food as Fuel to Perform at Your Highest Level. The Female Athlete System of Transformation is my unique program and proven systems to guide female athletes to understanding and implementing the proper nutrition for their sport, life, and health. Myself and my team of registered sports dietitians work one-on-one with clients to address their unique needs and counsel them through the nutritional and behavioral changes needed. Many female athletes who resonate with disordered eating, mental guilt around food and body, relative energy deficiency in sport or female athlete triad, amenorrhea, repeat injuries due to negligent nutrition, or frankly, just a lack of knowledge and understanding on their fueling needs have seen incredible success in the fast track. After years of working as a sports RD, I've compiled the most effective ways for female athletes to learn nutrition, be supported, be challenged, and ultimately find their success with fueling as fast as possible. So don't wait another day. Get to your goals faster by joining the Female Athlete System of Transformation. Look in the show notes or head to the website to book a free call and learn more. Okay, now let's get you back to the conversation. Enjoy. And you know, I think from a societal standpoint too, that viewership piece is huge because even as, as a female athlete myself, it's like, but I want to support being a spectator and a fan exactly. of other female athletes. And so be having the opportunity to, to view them, whether it be on TV or local sports teams, you know, being hyped up more, having more games locally, just like, I, I will say as, as a spectator and fan, I just, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I personally feel that women's sports at in the NCAA level have really gotten more attention over the past five or 10 years. And I think that's really helping where maybe some more work needs to be done at the pro level. But I think women's sports at the NCAA level are really making a mark for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think both are true. I mean, in this year, again, with women's basketball, they, they, they broke records. I mean, they had more people watching it that they were talking about bowl games and other championships and so that's the case for sure. I think volleyball yeah. is still, and that's one of the premier sports, and they're still looking to get kind of the media play that they deserve. Softball is another one that, like, the the viewership for the uh, Women's College World Series has been off the charts. So, yeah. yes, we are for sure making strides. And, you know, what we've always said about the, the, the pro teams, men's pro teams, it's, it's taken them years to get their footing. And then when a women's pro team comes along, the WNBA is still very young and the whole arc of professional teams, people think, oh God, first two years, they aren't like off the charts with sponsorships and viewerships and all these things, ticket sales. And yet, you know, men's leagues, it took years. The the NBA really didn't take off until Magic and Larry Bird Uh were in it. So, you know, we, we have to just be patient on some level with the judgment But then there's folks like us that want to be, you know, we want to urgently tell people, hey, give it a shot. Donna Lopiano, who used to run the Women's Sports Foundation, a former athletic director at University of Texas, always said, you know, give your girls and boys a a ball, not a doll, and take them to see women's sporting events, not just men's, Mm -hmm. you know. And now what's happening is young boys are going to our our, um, Casey Current games and they're going to see women play professional basketball and and the collegiate space and they're not thinking anything of it they want to watch good sports and so or it's like if you wanted to watch sports you had to go watch a men's game so I think that shift Mm -hmm. and parents men and women that are taking their daughters and sons to go watch women play that's going to be the generational shift I do see it coming for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I see that coming as well. And and I think it's also something to get excited about. I'm yeah. just a, a little bit about me personally. I have a little boy and another one due very soon coming on the way. And so it's something that I'm thinking about now as a new mom of like, oh, yeah, that's something exciting I can do, you know, with them as boys growing up is make sure that they, you know, watch women's sports just as equally yeah. as, you know, men's sports. I've got a great story for you. Our chief of staff, Christina Turner, she's got a five-year-old boy and a uh, probably two-year-old now. 
Yeah. And, you know, so the whole time Chase has been growing up, she's been taking him for the last three years to the KC Current Games or to women's basketball games when the Big 12 tournament's here or regionals. And he literally said to her this year, Mom, do boys play sports too? And I love that. <laughs> we're like, oh my God, is that so great? So yeah. again, it's just these are cultural, these are behavioral norms that we're passing on. So of course he's gonna pick up real quickly. Yeah, boys play sports. Yeah. You know, but because she was going to support the women, he and he was loving it. He loves the games, loves the atmospheres. And so it is, there is the shift coming, you know? Yeah. So it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it does take time going back to your last comment, you know, it, it, these things take time. And so, you know, we're going to keep pushing for it, but to, to have that patience as well. Yeah. And I want to, I want to hit on some other statistics that are from the women leaders in college sports website Uh that shares 24% of all NCAA athletic directors are women. I would imagine that this has greatly improved. Do, can you share any insight as to how much it has improved? Like where were we 10 years ago and where do we want to be 10 years from now? Yeah, I'm trying to remember when I first got here and that breakdown, you know, so it's 24% overall in division one, it's just under 15%. That has improved drastically. It used to be like 9%. Oh. Uh, I've been in this role 14 years. I think my first year was 9% yeah. in division one level. Division two, it's just over 23%. In division three, it's about 33%. So, you know, 24% doesn't sound great. Yeah. So, yeah, I think overall those numbers, obviously they've improved over the years, but it's just like one in, one out, you know, two in and then, you know, women retiring or women opting out, you know, that we were on a really, we had um, really increased the numbers dramatically. And then over COVID, a lot of women opted out more so, men and women opted out, but more so on the women's side. Mm. So we're trying to kind of rebuild in that way, but we're not anywhere near being there. And that's that frustrating point. 50th year title mind, we're all going, scratching our head saying 24%. Yeah. Like it needs to be closer to 50. It needs to be 50. 50%, you know, actually now, you know, the numbers of women attending college, it's like 56%. Yeah. So it's more women than men. And the number of female athletes, you know, kind of teeters around there. So that that's, can be under 50%. So still the leadership should reflect the population and that's not happening. Right. Right. We're not even really, we're not near close enough. So we have a lot of work to do as an organization. We feel like, you know, we are doing our part and making sure we have the pipeline ready, making sure women are positioned and ready to lead and that we are getting those women out there and highlighting them. But we're educating search firms, we're educating hirers, presidents and chancellors, There's all these other influences uh, in the world of sports and a lot of unconscious biases that it's really hard to overcome those cultural, systemic and unconscious biases. Right, right. And and it's hard to overcome because it's unconscious. That's exactly why it's hard to overcome. I love what you said, though, of the leader should reflect the population. You know, I mean, that speaks true in in so many different scenarios, not just in sport, right? It's, It's just it's really powerful to reflect on that and think on that. And so here we are talking about, you know, gender for sure of getting more females into these leadership roles, whether it's administration or coaching positions. But also, I think we can expand that to more diversity as well. So another statistic on your website, and this is speaking of Fortune 500 CEOs, only 8.2% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women. And out of that, there's 41 women and only five of them are women of color. So I think, you know, it's ensuring more women as well as women of color and diverse backgrounds that can step into these leadership roles. This is a pretty loaded question, but, you know, what are some ways that we can just actively do that to to make sure that leaders are reflective of the population? Yeah. And, and particularly with women of color, it's it's an intentional process. We have a women of color commitment. We work really hard here to make sure we have, all, you know, many different things we do to make sure we are positioning women of color to be seen mm-hmm. as leaders. We're connecting them with hires. So all these things are really important. And I will tell you last year, we tracked the number of hires made into the leadership roles, ADA commissioner roles. 50 were made last year that were women. And out of that, 46% were women of color. 
So we made huge strides in that area, but overall, those are still the numbers aren't moving enough. But so, you know, again, it's an education process. If you've you've been on our website, you've seen our uh, our podcasts, all of our you know uh, institutes, not only in attendance but in faculty. We make sure that we have high percentages of women of color participating and leading in those spaces. Again, you have to be seen, yeah. and so we that that's a huge inf- and um, it's a huge part of what we do, part of our commitment. Now, women overall, obviously, that's what our organization is based on, but yes. women of color for sure, and so. And we coach and teach and encourage and we talk to hires about the importance of this whole see it to be it and inclusive hiring practices. Mm-hmm. We send hirers lists of names that they if through our Career Connect database, we always make sure it's a diverse list. So we don't let any hirer say, oh, there's not enough women or we can't find women of color. No, we send those to them. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we also coach them up that sometimes you, you can't look you know, with, at your job description and the qualifications you want in such a silo. If someone comes from kind of a different area, leadership can be learned, you know, and oh, coached yeah. up. So we really encourage. And the, the thing with sports is it's always been these really siloed skill sets they're looking for. So we're really trying to teach and encourage leaders to think about the broader skill sets, the leadership skill sets that both women and women of color have in spades. Mm-hmm. We are ready. And, you know, it's again, it's, it's overcoming those unconscious biases. Mm-hmm. Fans, I hope you are enjoying the conversation. We are going to take a quick pause so I can tell you about our partners. They are so valuable in providing you with amazing products and helping keep this podcast going. First, Prevenix. Thanks to their incredible joint health plus product, my aches and pains from running. And honestly, being a new mom, as crazy as that sounds, have literally disappeared as I continue to push my body physically as an athlete. And frankly, as I continue to age, I was shocked at the aches I was beginning to feel in my knees, wrists, ankles. It seemed like omega-3s, curcumin, nothing was really working. But after just one month of Joint Health Plus from Prevenix, I felt a drastic improvement. Honestly, this is something I rarely experience with supplements, but Prevenix uses quality ingredients backed by sound science. Their products are pharmaceutical grade with extensive testing for safety, quality, and purity. They offer other supplements, including probiotics, omega, immune health, and a multivitamin, which I also use daily. And the science behind their multi has changed my opinion on multivitamins altogether. I used to never recommend them or take them myself. And now I recommend and take Prevnex Multivitamin Mineral and Antioxidant Plus daily. I am so impressed with Prevnex and I can't wait for you to try. You can get 15% off your first order using the code RISEUP at checkout. The company also offers 100% money back guarantee within 30 days because they stand by their products. And so do I. Head to Prevnex.com, P-R-E-V-I-N-E-X.com and use the code RISEUP, one word at checkout for 15% off. For nutritional shakes and bars to fuel your body, head to Orgain.com and use the code RISEUP30 for 30% off your first order. Orgain's ready-to-drink nutritional shakes are my go-to to to throw in my bag when I'm heading to the gym or to a trail to run so that when I'm done, I've got a recovery option to refuel and rehydrate with right away. Orgain makes nutrition and sports nutrition that works. For repeat customers, check the show notes for more. And again, first-time customers, head to orgain.com and use the code RISEUP30, all caps. And last, ladies, moms, every mom is an athlete. That's why Jen and Carrie have designed the best nursing and pumping sports bras. I cannot rave about these enough. I hate that most maternity bras have clips and don't support being active, but Jen and Carrie get that because they're moms and athletes themselves. They want you to be a mom and an athlete. So their stylish and athletic high impact bras allow you to crush your workout and then feed your baby with comfort and style. They have saved me during this time of my life, keeping up with sport and momming. Please go check them out at jenandcarry.com and use the code riseup 10 for $10 off your order. You won't regret it. 
Again, jenandcarry.com, rise up all caps, rise up 10 for $10 off. Let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I just love the power in, you know, how you're saying leadership can be learned. Oh, for sure. You know, sure. Some people are kind of natural born leaders, whatever, but it's something that can be taught and can be learned. And so again, providing those opportunities to more people. And that's exactly what your, you know, organization is doing. Yep. And kind of circling back to to your own personal experiences as well, you know, where when you were hired as a coach at age 22, it's like, well, it's not just who you know, it's how you might have to say this again, not just who you know, but who, how well, who, who you know, knows you. you. Yeah. Yep. And so I see that in women leaders in college sports as an organization is you're really getting to know, you know, these, the potential of, of people, of women, of women of color and really networking and getting to know them so that you can advocate for them. Yes. It's not just, you know, you know, somebody saying, Hey, I'm over here. I'd be a good fit for the job. It's, you know, you guys really getting to know them and build them up and get them ready and prepared. Yes. Yes. I'm glad you said that. And we have all sorts of ways that we do that. But this whole notion of our network, our community yeah. is really a powerful part of our organization. And we have this uh, platform called Engage, where members can go in and we have affinity circles. So I think we have 18 affinity circles now. So they can engage with each other if it's you know, coaches that want to be administrators or women in pro sports or, you know, the Title IX group or student athlete welfare group or whatever, they can all get to know each other from across the country. Then they're advocating for each other. They're also uplifting each other, educating each other. And our, our slogan is strong women lift each other up. It's actually painted on the side of our building. I'm sure you've seen it on in some website photos and we believe it and live it. Yeah. And we are that network. So this is what the boys have done for years. And I always say, listen, we, want, we don't want to point fingers and say, you know, the boys are doing it wrong. They're actually doing a great job. Mm -hmm. We have to do the same type of great job. So we have to uplift each other. We have to pull each other along and we need the guys involved. And so they're part of our network. Mm -hmm. So we actually have uh, a lot of male members. We have, uh, you know, our male champions that are involved at every level from sponsorship to mentorship to coaching to just making sure that their women are engaged. And so this whole community of helping women elevate and being seen is a huge part of what we do. Mm -hmm. And you're right. How do you become known? It used to be being involved with the boys club. Mm -hmm. And that was really hard to infiltrate. So we tell women, yeah, in, in the boys club, and actually we have a club too. And so this club is gaining in power and influence all the time. And we have men that are now involved in this one as well. So you have to have these spaces where women have the opportunity to lead, whether it's through our being a circle lead on many of our committees, on our board of directors, et cetera. And then we can also advocate for them to, to step in these roles in other places, which we do all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, this is not a men versus women thing. It's oh, a work together not. thing and lift each other up. 100%. Lift each other up for sure. And what a what a powerful slogan, strong women lift each other up. I just yeah. I love that. It's it's really empowering. But I think that was a great transition as well to maybe is is there other ways to get involved in women leaders in college sport? I mean, you mentioned the Engage program. Uh, you know, what are some other, you know, programs or events held or ways to get involved? There's lots of ways. So uh, we have so much going on with our membership. So anyone that wants to get involved should just shoot us an email. You can go to our website at womenleadersincollegesports.org. Uh, but so we have, you know, a mentoring program. We have these membership circles. We have a whole cadence of leadership institutes and programs mm -hmm. from all levels. We like to say that we pre prepare and position women to advance at every level of your career. So we have a rising stars program, help women understand just general things to, you know, start advancing. And then we have uh, three levels of institute, institutes and up to our executive institute for women that actually want to be athletic directors or commissioners. We have our network of extraordinary talent, our next program that women that are in leadership roles connect with each other at every level and those that are in the, the pro space as well. So there's all, you know, we have committees to get involved in. And so, yeah, you know, we, we just, 
we have so much going on here. And then we also have member um, happy hours all over the country. I just came back to one or from one. Everywhere that we go, we host an event in Durham uh, for emerging women leaders in sports with the Durham Sports Commission. And we had 120 young women there from all over. People drove in up to three hours for that. But we also hosted a, a happy hour the night before. Yeah. So wherever we're traveling to, we try to make sure that we're open, that we can pull people in. So there's always ways to engage virtually through your computer, with the Engage platform, in person. And then, of course, it all culminates in our national convention, which this year will be in New Orleans, October 8th through the 10th. It is a mind-blowing, set your soul on fire, Oprah-esque, cannot miss events. We had 1,200 people there last year. Wow. And it's, it's one of those things. I mean, 1,000 of those 1,200 are women. Yeah. How exciting. Oh, so you don't get that very often. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys come, men of influence are there, but it is a space and we talk general leadership. We, it's a, it's really a leadership event. Yeah. And so that's really the culmination for everyone at every level. And it's a super special event, but we have all sorts of programs that we host all throughout the summer. Yeah. So, so exciting. And as again, as I was kind of preparing to talk with you and preparing for this podcast, I've heard of women leaders in college sport. I've heard of this organization. I've seen your logo. I know of it. And I went on the website to prepare for this. And I thought to myself, why am I not involved? You need to be involved. (laughs) Yes, because I was going through the program stuff. And I was like, why am I not involved in this? You know, and so anyways, you'll be hearing from me. You need to be involved. (laughs) And you know, One of the things that we teach in all our programs, and I'm a huge believer in this, you know, is this whole fit to lead, which really fits into with what you're doing. And it's been such a huge part of my life journey. I had an autoimmune disorder years ago. Mm. It actually was the biggest blessing of my life because it forced me to kind of get into this whole, I'm at, you know, health and nutrition. And I'm a like avid health freak, basically. (laughs) And I could not travel the way I travel and work the way I do if I wasn't. Right. So I think it's such an important part of leadership that we don't talk about enough. Mm -hmm. It's not all leadership's in your head. You need to have vision and strategy and you need to be able to coach and lead. You have to be able to show up every day and you have to have the energy to be present. Mm -hmm. And it's a conversation that's not being had enough. We we talk about it in every one of our programs Mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to be fit to lead. What does that mean for you? So we don't, you know, prescribe to certain diets or things or, you know, like that. We, we encourage women in particular to find out what works for them. And there are some simple things, yep. you know, to think about like hydration, you know, the nutrition, sleep, those types of things, energy management. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and we have circles that are devoted to that, a member circle. Amazing. So you've got to get involved. We'd love to get you involved in I will be. tap into some of your resources as well. Yeah, I will be. You're hyping me up. You're inspiring me. I'm, I'm ready to go. And, Good. And, and when you said fit to lead, I love that. One of my slogans as a registered dietitian is helping female athletes become fierce, fit, and fueled. And I mean, Ooh. fierce... Yes. Fierce in their mind. Fierce, fit, and fueled. I love it. Yeah, it's good, right? Fierce in their mindset, fit in their body and fueled for sport. I love it. And that fit in, in your body is is huge to do these things that you you know want to do and accomplish, whether it be sport or leadership or your career and things like that. So, well, I hope that our listeners are inspired just as much as me and are also logging on to the website right now to see how they can get involved. Patty, I just want to kind of wrap this up with a few fun questions. I think yeah. uh, here's here's just a, a broad one, but any final parting advice for empowering girls and women to dream bigger and just see more for themselves? You mentioned early, you know, earlier on about how Title IX has given possibilities and you have a great TED Talk about becoming a possible Tarian. Yes, one of my words. I love it. Yeah. Yes. So how how can we empower girls and women to dream bigger? Yeah, I love the word possible Tarian and I'm a big believer in potential and growth mindset. I speak a lot on that. And you know, so I and I, and a lot of that comes down to confidence and confidence for women and confidence is a muscle. It's a skill like any other skill that can be grown. And actually, Mel Robbins has a great quote that says, confidence isn't something you feel, it's something you do. Oh, good. So I encourage young women to get in motion, do things, try things, take risks, and just know leadership and success isn't about getting it right every time. 
And that's not at all. Resilience, and I'm wondering if resilience is one of the words behind me, strong and resilient are two of our words. It's about trying things and getting back up and continuing to try and grow and do. Mm -hmm. And so I would just encourage every woman listening to know that your potential is far greater than anything you could possibly imagine. That is true for all of us. Mm -hmm. And your potential goes up when you set a goal and reach it, and then you can get to the next level. But that happens through you know, growing your confidence each and every day and dreaming about what is it that you want to do and then surrounding yourself with the right people that can get there, that can help you get there. And I can tell everyone, if you want to work in the business of sports, we are a great resource and a great place to start. And we believe the world needs more women leaders in sports. So we're going to do everything we can to help women find their right place in that universe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for that. I love the the reminder of the quote, confidence isn't something you feel, it's something you do. It gets us into yes. motion and step into step into action. So Patty, I might be throwing you off. I didn't I didn't send you these questions ahead of time, but they're just rapid no fire fun questions. Perfect. If there's one food you could eat every single day for the rest of your life and never get sick of it, what would it be? Mexican. Mexican food. I mean, it, tacos, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm in San Antonio. Oh my gosh. I've never loved tacos so much in my life. Chips like, and salsa. I literally okay. could eat all day long. Yeah. yeah. What is your favorite sport to participate in yourself? Pickleball. Fun. I'm a, I, yeah, it was basketball forever uh, growing up, but I'm an avid pickleball player, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about as a spectator? What's your favorite sport to watch? Well, that's probably women's basketball. You know, I grew up with women's basketball coaching, playing the whole thing, but and I love watching women's volleyball. I don't get to find it as much until the tournament. But um, and now I'm getting hooked on soccer with Casey Kurt in our backyard. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I mean, all of those. Oh, and of course, <laughs> I watch football on the men's side uh, quite yeah. a bit as well. Of, well. Again, we're in the home of Kansas City Chiefs. So mm -hmm. certainly on board there. Okay. And then final question is going to be ridiculously hard for you. If there's a female athlete out there that you want to give a shout out to for being an inspiration and a role model, who would that be and why? Wow. A female athlete. I mean, God, that's a tough one. I'm a huge fan of Sue Bird and just how she has navigated her career since she has played and graduated and really stepped into a leadership role and Megan Rapino and how she's become more uh, vocal in so many ways. Uh, that's a tough one to say one. Oh, oh I know. I mean, Serena. <laughs> yeah. Venus, Serena, you know, I mean, I just think that the female athletes that use their platform, those are the ones that I'm drawn to more and more. And so many more of them actually have the opportunity to do that now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, big fans. Yeah. Again, I think it goes right in line with so much that you spoke of today of, you know, giving these these female athletes have had the opportunity to show their amazing skill as athlete, but they also get to become leaders in things, you know, that yeah. that they're passionate about and that they who they are as people yeah. as well. So super Megan Rapino, Venus, Serena Williams, just some of some of your top, but I'm sure there's just hundreds, 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 hundreds. There's <laughs> many, honestly. I just read an article about Sue. So that's why she was yeah. top of mind. I mean, yeah. That would probably change daily. But yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Big fans. Patty, thank you so much again for your time. This was such an awesome and inspiring conversation. Thank you for all that you're doing for women in sport and women leaders in sport, the, the athletes, the coaches, the administrators, the people who make it happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, everybody, thanks for listening. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you did, if you are a true fan of female athlete nutrition, then I would love if you could support our podcast by spreading the word, share a review on your listening channel, give us five stars. It really helps get the word out and get the show more views to positively impact others. Also, you can support the podcast by joining our Patreon. Head to patreon.com slash female athlete nutrition to consider a donation or even better, join our membership where you get extra monthly content and perks. We don't want you to simply listen alone. We want you to be a part of a community and a movement of fierce, fit, and fueled female athletes. So patreon.com slash female athlete nutrition is where you can do exactly that, learn more, and join. A huge thanks to our affiliates and partners as well. Once again, Prevenix, Inside Tracker, or Gain, Practice Better, Jen and Carrie, please go check them out and their links in the show notes where you can get deals and discounts. Last, be sure that you do more than just listen. If you need help with fueling, it's time to take action. 
head to my website to learn more. You can either book a free call with me to learn more about our coaching programs and how we can work directly with you, whether it's the fast track or otherwise. Or you can take our online self-study course, Female Athlete Nutrition. You can literally sign up and gain access right now. You can explore our downloadable products, including the Red S Recovery Guide, High Iron Fueling Guide. Or if you are a coach of a team, check out our brand new coaches toolkit for teams. You can also just learn more. We have a blog, a Red S quiz to see if Red S is affecting you. If you need help, I want you to get help fast. Too many girls and athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer. You can rise up with the power of nutrition, take action today in any of these avenues, and become fierce, fit, and fueled. Links in the show notes, and we'll see you next time.